Hello, this is Max Drake. I just want to talk about this uh, reservations app that I've been dealing with. I've got pretty much most of the things resolved now. Um, uh, the four items that I've been dealing with or really wanted to tidy up at the end had to do, first of all, that when you actually went in and looked at the reservations and you looked at the charts, the charts weren't updating. Now, um, uh, David Siegel came up with a suggestion that you actually add this and update equals and today and uh, onto the end of your script. So inside my um, uh, dates where I actually look up those tables here, um, you'll find that normally if you actually have a uh, get an image from your chart. So if I'm in my charts table there, you'll find that if I come through here, and get the information on the chart or publish a chart and publish it as a image, it will come through like, um, uh, it will come through like this with the image, format equals image. And then you've got to add this and update equal da -da 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 onto there and it refreshes those tables a lot more quickly. So it seems to be easier to actually view that information for those. So that was one thing of updating because again, the alternative was to use this reservations um, uh, awesome uh, table, but that went off the screen and I actually think that the, um, uh, the, the, the charts look fine. That I think they work really well. So um, I think that's a, a nice solution to actually have. So that was one of the things that I ended up doing. Um, great um, uh, for the Glide uh, community to come up with those sorts of suggestions. Um, so thank you very much for that. The second one that I actually had, um, uh, and uh, it's when I'm actually inputting data into the sheet, I don't want the data to stay in the input sheet because otherwise it then gets pushed through again and again and again. Now, at the moment, I've actually got for this point here an app trigger for do, 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 add the events, which is basically on change. So every time I push a reservation into here, on change triggers it. So if I just go through here and um, uh, just go to add reservations and we just add a reservation here and we just go, we're going to go to six because, um, uh, and we go 9 p.m. and the number is nine and the name is nine and the phone is 999 and the table is guess what? Yes, there we go. And if we add that one there, if we go into our reservations, you see it comes through and it disappears. Because basically, as soon as it goes through that on change, it pushes it into the Google Calendar. And if we go to the 6, there's that thing. So Mr. 9 has made a 9 o'clock appointment for 9 people, etc, etc, etc. So that works really nicely. So I can get the information in there and I can clear that out. Now, there's a little bit of messy coding in there. One of the things with the coding and the previous exercise, I tried deleting after I'd actually put something in there. I tried deleting rows and it wouldn't let me delete these rows below. So what I ended up doing was I ended up just doing a um, clear the whole sheet, just blow everything away. And then I had to delete from row three down. So um, if there's any more rows coming through, it just went to the last row and just deleted all of those rows out. So what that actually did was um, it allowed um, for it allowed um, for a clean sheet because what actually happened if there were rows here the next row that came through would come through after several blank rows then when it tried to push it into the calendars calendars just saw these whole lot of blank cells and just broke straight away so this is why you actually have to go through and delete these rows to make sure it works anyway I got that part of the coding so then I actually had to go through and rebuild all the headers into there I then had to repopulate all of the formulas and I put the formulas as variables at the top top here and then I just found the ranges and actually put them in individually like that and then at the end I've been using this um, dot toast to actually do a pop-up message so when I'm testing it in the reservation it just pops up down the bottom down here to say that that, that, that function has actually um, happened so I'm very pleased with that that now works now so um, uh, when I share this you'll be able to get that code from from that point of view 
So that took a little bit of fiddling, more than happy with. The next one that I was actually looking for is that when you're actually looking at the reservations, you want to know that it's updated and it's it's the freshest information that you have. So George B suggested using this switch. He uses this switch to actually trigger um, a thing where he's pulling in spread data from other people's spreadsheets into his app. So that way... Um, other people aren't messing uh, with, with his um, app spreadsheet and he can pull it in. So he's using this refresh trigger. Um, I've tried using this. Um, I haven't quite got there. So the idea is that this will then pull all of the information from um, uh, from the Google's calendar because what is in Google's calendar is the truth of what appointments have been made. So we're using Google Calendar as a database in this particular point. So if I just go back into here, here's the information that I've got coming through. And if I just run this script, script get events, you'll see it runs it, blows it all away. And here's my little pop-up toast just telling me that that's actually happened. And my new appointments come through there as a new one. The next thing that I've done, and now that isn't working yet, so at the moment I've still got to manually do it, and I've got a backup one, which is to make a dummy reservation. So what I'm actually looking to do is to make a dummy reservation, but that actually means that inside my Glide app, I've got to start my um, add a reservation, and from the pull-down list, it starts from today. Now, I've got to start from yesterday so that I can create a dummy reservation in the day before so that it won't interfere with any of the information going forward. So let's just say you've got three people who are actually taking bookings. Maybe, you know, they one always uses the term Smith so that you know that it's a dummy reservation. And on the end of that reservation, I can trigger an update. So I'm actually using one function to trigger another function. Although my preference is, you see, you actually just want to update and refresh everything before you make a reservation just to see that it's thing. So the only way that I can do it is to force the dummy reservation. I was doing that. So it just means I've just got to put this, um, uh, the next script, which is this one here, um, which is the um, uh, get events. And I just got to, at the moment, I'm trying to check it on a flag. So at the moment, I've got a little sheet one with a little refresh thing. So if you look here, if I change from false to true, it's saying that it's, you see that double blink because it's running the other one and then it's running it. So that one's actually updated at that point in time. Now it triggers from inside here, but it doesn't trigger. This doesn't occur when I'm actually doing it from the app. We've tried doing it on a different switch which was somebody else. It's, uh, Jeff Hager's suggestion was to try that. That didn't work either. So I've got to look at an alternative thing for that. The last thing that I'm, I'm actually doing is the information. So when you actually look at calendars, the calendars have basically got um, four things. It's got um, the event. It's got um, location. It's got a start time and an end time. And it's got um, the description of the appointment. So you've really only got four places you can put data. Now, three of them we are using to actually make the events all occur. The fourth one here, which is that, is something that I'm now using to put all of my information in. And what I'm doing is, as I'm putting it in, in, a separate, in a specific way, some of these are a bit messy, but the way that I'm doing it is between each item. So I've got the table number six at 6 p.m. on the 6th of, of the 30th of the 6th, and it's for Mr. Six, and there's six people, and there's telephone number is 666. So there's a whole lot of information on there, or here's the data for other ones. So I can then use split to actually break that information out so that when I actually go and look for somebody, so we're going to have a look for Mr. Six, and there's Mr. Six, we just take this one here, and we've now split the data out so that we can actually get the simple values and to see that particular booking so if somebody comes to the booking we can actually say okay then we've got all the reservations forward from where we are and we just use the search engine so i think there's one called mr track so again we can just filter onto there and we can get all of the information that we need from there so that was the fourth exercise that i was trying to do so i'm very pleased with actually getting that so apart from 
uh, this not refreshing straight away. Um, uh, and there's three triggers, well, four triggers that I can do. Um, there's a time-based trigger, which is one thing that I'm doing. And uh, I'll go back and maybe actually just suddenly saying we'll just refresh every flipping minute, but it's it's not elegant. Um, so I can do an on edit, an on change, and I can do I can choose. Sorry, I can choose the, the function, and so I can do it from the spreadsheet, and I can do an on open or an on change, or I can do it time driven, and from the time driven, I can go down to a minute. So therefore, you've got to wait a minute to actually get it refreshed. So it's refreshing on a minute. So if there's two people doing, it's not likely they're going to be doing it within a minute of each other. And the third um, method that you can do, or um, I've tried to do as well, sorry, that's time driven. And the other one is from the calendar. So if the calendar does it, it if the calendar is updated, then that will trigger it. But I've done that and it doesn't seem to work. So um, uh, again, I think I'll go back to trying a, a different one uh, at this point in time. So oops, let me just cancel out of that. So those are the things that I've tried. So hopefully um, uh, I just want to post this video because this I've had three videos on this. This is the fourth one to get this thing working and I'm actually quite pleased. I actually think this is pretty much a functioning app now that anybody can take it away and actually build um, an appointment app so that you can actually just add appointments in and you're doing it from there and it should be pretty reliable. I've, I'm pleased with where it is. So I'll be posting this up um, with all the information as normal as in the spreadsheet and the codes and everything. The only thing which you won't have is the app script triggers that you'll actually have to um, uh, set up for yourself because they need to be done based on your account details. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been a help and I hope it um, uh, people get some nice booking apps to use. Thank you very much. Goodbye.